Dead America. Tales from the Front Lines. AWOL. Chapter 1. Day 0 plus 1. 10.37 a.m. Lakeland, Florida, 35 miles east of Tampa. Corporal Williams and Private Chase crouched behind the window of a small clothing store, just across the street from a massive supercenter. Tables and displays had been hastily stacked against the store's front windows and door, creating a makeshift barricade. The exhaustion weighed heavily on both men, having spent the last 36 hours locked in combat against the relentless undead. Their entire squad had fallen victim to the ferocity of the enemy, leaving them numb to the chaos, lost in a state of shock. But amidst the chaos, they remained focused on their mission. With a pair of binoculars in hand, Corporal Williams peered across the street at the supercenter, where a few dozen zombies lurked in the parking lot, another twenty or so pressed against the building's front, desperately trying to breach it. Looks like there are some survivors inside, Corporal Williams remarked. Private Chase, however, held a bleak outlook. Maybe, but I doubt it. Where's your optimism, Chase? Williams asked. Lost it around eight in the morning yesterday, Chase replied. Fair enough, Williams conceded. As they maintained their positions, Chase's cell phone began to vibrate. He pulled it out and glanced at the screen, revealing a string of missed calls and text messages. He didn't bother reading the latest messages. He knew they were variations of the same plea for help that had flooded in since the outbreak began. Are you going to get that? We have the time. Williams suggested. Chase shook his head. No point. Can't do anything about it. Curiosity peaked, Williams inquired. Who is it? My girlfriend Wendy. Our neighbors at the apartments. A few other people, Chase replied. You should at least let her know you're still alive. She's probably worried sick, Williams suggested. Chase's face grew stern. His thoughts focused on a difficult decision. And tell her what? That I'm alive and about to hop on a boat to safety while leaving her to die. I'd rather her think I'm already dead than have her die knowing I betrayed her. Williams took a moment to ponder before nodding in agreement. Yeah, it is a big bowl of bullshit that we're just picking up and abandoning our posts. But what can you do? Chase's expression hardened, his mind resolute. Well, I can think of one thing I can do. Williams cautioned him. Put that thought right out of your head, Private. We have a job to do, and we're going to do it. Don't worry, Corporal. I'm not going to abandon you. I know those people in the stadium need these supplies, and I'm going to do what I can to make sure they get them, even if this plan is stupid as hell and most likely going to get us killed. Yeah. I'm not a real fan of this plan either, Williams admitted. But you're really thinking about running. Going AWOL in a time of war, they execute people for that. In three hours, every soldier is going to be on a ship headed out into the Gulf. Do you really think they're going to send someone after me if I leave? Chase reasoned. Williams contemplated the question and eventually gave a half-hearted nod. That's true, but still. Chase pressed on, determined. Still what? I signed up because I wanted to help people. Not cut and run when the going got tough. Now, I'm sure somebody way above our pay grade has a grand plan. But that doesn't help the people closest to me. I'm not going to abandon them. Williams understood Chase's perspective and nodded in agreement. I hear you, Chase. I've been stationed here for two years. And it does feel wrong to just run away from the fight when so many people need us. You can always run with me, Williams, Chase offered. I don't know, Chase, Williams replied. Think it over, because assuming we survive this half-assed plan, I'm bolting. I could use the extra firepower, Chase said. Williams nodded as the radio came to life, and the captain's voice echoed through it. Decoy team, are you ready? As ready as we're ever going to be, Captain. How much time do you need? Williams responded. Three minutes, Corporal. Hold them at your position, then evacuate back to base. Our intel says that the trucks are mostly full, 
so we won't be far behind, the captain instructed. Copy that, captain. Make your final preparations. We move on your signal. Good luck, captain. The radio fell silent, and both men picked up their weapons, checking their rifle magazines before taking their positions on either side of the front window. Chase questioned, so how are we playing this? Williams replied, spray and pray to get them over here. Then execution. Chase voiced his concern, and when this sorry excuse for a barricade collapses under their weight, Williams grinned, shaking his head. Just keep shooting and don't get bitten. Chase couldn't help but comment. All the resources of the greatest military on earth. And this is the best plan we could come up with. Doesn't really instill you with a lot of confidence about the overall strategy. Williams smirked, understanding Chase's attempt at humor, and said, I know what you're doing, Chase. And I said I'd think about it. We need to focus. With safeties off on their rifles, both soldiers took a deep breath before William squeezed the trigger. The bullet tore through the window, heading toward the mob outside the supercenter. Chase fired off a few shots as well, none hitting their targets, but effectively drawing the attention of the creatures. They began to break away and run toward the clothing store. Wait until they hit our parking lot before opening up, Williams instructed. Chase made a wager. Ten bucks says I land the first headshot. Williams chuckled. Might as well make it ten thousand, since money doesn't really matter anymore. Chase chuckled softly. The tension momentarily lifted as both men regained their focus. With their targets selected, they waited for the creatures to step onto the parking lot before squeezing the triggers. Bullets flew, and Chase's round found its mark, hitting a sprinting zombie square in the forehead. The creature fell forward, its momentum carrying it across the pavement face first, causing those behind it to stumble over their fallen comrade. Williams, on the other hand, missed entirely, prompting a chuckle from Chase. The levity was short-lived as the horde of ghouls closed in on the store. The first few zombies pounded on the front window with such ferocity that they cracked the glass. With forceful smacks from their bloody hands, the window shattered, sending shards of glass into the store. Both soldiers opened fire, each carefully selecting their targets and sending rounds straight through zombie heads. One by one, the creatures slumped over the broken window, forming a gruesome barrier between the soldiers and the undead. However, as the firing continued, the rest of the mob reached them, increasing the pressure on the makeshift barricade. Even over the deafening gunfire, the two men could hear the wood snapping under the weight. Their horror deepened as they saw the tables and displays sliding backward towards them. The weak point was right in the middle, parting like the Red Sea. Both soldiers concentrated their fire, rapidly dispatching several zombies albeit wasting precious ammo in the process. With almost simultaneous clicks indicating empty magazines, they dropped them to insert fresh ones. The barricade was losing the battle. Get back behind the counter, Corporal Williams shouted. Both soldiers slammed in fresh magazines and made a run for the back of the store. They leaped over a counter, avoiding another makeshift barricade they had created to buy themselves a few precious seconds. As they landed on the ground and spun around, they continued to fire at the front of the store. Chase focused his fire on the fringes of the mob, while Williams relentlessly placed round after round into the center of the horde, desperately trying to contain the breach. Despite their best efforts, the center finally gave way, and the zombies flooded into the building. Chase adjusted his aim, both men shooting as quickly as they could into the mass of undead. Some bullets found their marks, but most hit non-lethal areas. The rampaging mob sprinted through the store, knocking everything in their path to the ground. It took only moments for them to reach the back counter, which was only waist high. Both soldiers opened fire with all they had, running the barrels of their guns right down the line, eliminating the front line of zombies before retreating into the back room. William slammed the door shut, putting his back against it while Chase grabbed a box by the back door and pulled out a Molotov cocktail. 
Where the hell did you get that? Williams asked in surprise. Chase held up the bottle of liquor with a rag in it. The manager of this store apparently hated his life because this was in his desk. You want to burn the place down? Williams questioned. While it's unlikely they would come looking for me, I can guarantee that they'll leave me alone if they think I'm dead, Chase explained. I guess that means you want my answer, huh? I could really use your help, Williams, Chase replied. Corporal Williams was deep in thought, considering the offer to run. And look at it like this. Our ultimate mission is to exterminate these things. Whether we're with the main force or on our own, we'll be doing that in spades, Chase added. Williams, still contemplating, was interrupted by the radio. Good job, Corporal. We're in and getting packed up. You have new orders. Do not retreat back to base. Repeat, do not retreat back to base. You are to report to the vicinity of the Supercenter on Palmer Street. The team over there needs a diversion. The captain's voice came through the radio. Williams held the radio in his hand, but did not respond. He glanced at Chase, who was giving him a serious look. And I can guarantee you that if you come with me, you won't be used as live bait again, Chase assured. Williams thought for a moment before nodding in agreement. He tossed the radio hard against the wall, breaking it. What the hell? Light these bastards up and let's go help your people, Williams declared. Now we're talking, Chase said. Williams moved away from the door, which was holding, and headed to the back door. He looked outside at a pickup truck sitting in the alleyway, relieved to see no signs of zombie movement. We're clear out here. Williams confirmed. Chase nodded before using a lighter to set the Molotov cocktail ablaze. One last act before we're fugitives. With the bottle on fire, Chase threw it against the interior wall. The glass shattered, and flaming liquid spread rapidly. Within seconds, the entire wall was engulfed in flames. The two men hurried to their truck, with Williams behind the wheel and Chase in the passenger seat. Where am I going? Williams asked. Head east a few miles and find a quiet spot for us to regroup, Chase instructed. Williams nodded, putting the truck into gear and speeding off. He glanced in the rearview mirror, watching the building they had just left pump out smoke. He took a deep breath, nodding to himself, trying to convince himself that he had made the right decision to run. Chapter 2 Williams drove the two soldiers out of the business district, veering down into a sprawling neighborhood. The streets were teeming with zombies, some of whom began to take notice of their vehicle. We need some place to lay low for a minute, Corporal Williams remarked. Private Chase pointed to a house with an open garage down on the right. Williams quickly spotted it, accelerating and pulling into the driveway. Both men exited the vehicle, rifles at the ready aware that zombies were converging on their position. Chase pressed the garage door button, and the motor sparked to life. They stood there, rifles aimed outward, ready to fend off any approaching threats. After a few tense moments, the door shut, sealing them inside. Let's clear the house, Corporal Williams ordered. The two soldiers hurried to the door, entering the house cautiously and sweeping through its rooms. As they reached the living room, a noise emanated from the far end of the hallway. They moved down the hallway, the sound of banging becoming more pronounced from one of the back bedrooms. They noticed that the bedroom door was shut, and a rope was tied to the doorknob, secured to another door. Both men lowered their weapons when they realized they were safe. That door opens in and it's secured. No way that thing is getting out, Private Chase observed. Still. I'd rather be safe than sorry, Corporal Williams replied. Williams signaled for Chase to follow, and they returned to the living room. They dragged a large recliner over to the hallway entrance, wedging it in place. If that thing somehow breaks out, this will buy us a few seconds, Corporal Williams explained. Chase nodded, his phone vibrating again. It's Wendy, Chase said. Better get it and give her the good news, Williams suggested. Chase nodded and answered the phone. Hey, baby. 
Wendy's voice trembled with relief. Oh, thank God. I was so worried. Why haven't you been answering my calls and texts? I'm so sorry, baby. I just couldn't. So much has been going on. I just didn't know what to say. Chase apologized. You could have let me know you were alive, Wendy exclaimed. I know. I'm sorry. And I'll explain everything later. But I'm here right now, and we need to get out of town, Chase reassured her. The military is letting us come with you, Wendy asked. Not exactly, Chase replied. There was a moment of silence as Wendy processed the situation. Baby, please tell me you didn't. They think we're dead. And besides, you're worth it, Chase said. Wendy hesitated before responding. Baby... I don't know what to say. We'll have plenty of time to figure that out. But right now, I need to know where you are and what's going on, Chase said. Wendy composed herself and explained, I'm still at the apartment. Things are really bad over here. Those creatures are everywhere. So many people. She paused, sobbing slightly before regaining her composure. I tried to run but didn't make it three steps outside the apartment. A bunch of our neighbors tried to do the same thing, but it was bad. Are you hurt? Are you bitten? Chase inquired. I'm fine. There's a couple of neighbors in our apartment too. They're both fine. We're just scared out of our minds. And we're trapped. Those things are all in the hallway and covering the parking lot, Wendy replied. Okay, baby. We're going to come for you and get out of town. Chase assured her. Where are we going to go? Wendy asked. Someplace safe, I promise. But first things first, we have to get you out of that apartment, Chase said. How can I help? Wendy inquired. Pack up all the food and water you can, and stay by the phone. When we get close, I'll call you, and we'll figure out an escape plan, Chase instructed. I love you, baby, Wendy said. I love you too. I'll be there soon, Chase replied. They both made a kissing noise before ending the call. Chase glanced over at Williams, who was smirking. What? Chase asked. Kissing over the phone. Really? Williams teased. Shut up. She likes it, Chase defended. Williams chuckled as he went to the window and surveyed the neighborhood. Several zombies were roaming around but the ones that had rushed toward the garage had mostly dispersed. I think if we give it another ten minutes, we'll be good to move, William suggested. Works for me. It'll give me time to figure out just how in the hell we're going to pull this off, Chase replied. And here I was being foolish enough to think you had a plan before you made us fugitives, Williams remarked. Chase shrugged and smiled. My plan was to rescue the girl and ride off into the sunset. Thought that was solid enough. Williams rolled his eyes, but couldn't hide a smile. So lay it out for me. What are we dealing with? The apartment building is on the other side of Lakeland. It's one of those fancy mid-rise deals, Chase explained. Dating well above your pay grade. Nicely done private, Williams complimented. Chase chuckled and continued. She's on the fourth floor facing south. So much for having them just jump down to us. That's going to be a hell of a run fighting up to the fourth floor and then back down again, Williams remarked. What if we only have to fight one way? Chase proposed. I'm listening, Williams replied. If we can find us a bigger vehicle, a bus or something, we get in at the second floor, fight our way up, then use rope to secure to the balcony and climb down, Chase outlined. Williams raised an eyebrow. Couple of problems with your plan. Where are we getting a bus and enough rope to do that? Thought you'd never ask, Chase grinned. Chase gestured toward the wall, adorned with several family pictures. Among them was one where the parents stood proudly with their son at his high school football game. High school football, Corporal Williams remarked. Williams took a moment to process the idea before it clicked. Wait. You want to steal a school bus? Private Chase nodded firmly. Yes, I do. Okay, that's
That's one problem down. But where the hell are we finding enough rope to climb down the side of a building with? Williams inquired. Chase explained, there's a high school a few miles away from the apartment building. It's in a rich neighborhood and wasn't built that long ago. They have a lot of stuff we never had, like a climbing wall. The school has a climbing wall. Are you kidding me? Williams raised an eyebrow. Chase chuckled. Benefits of living in a rich part of town. Williams smirked and shook his head. Hell, our maps in social studies still had East and West Germany on them. I was definitely born on the wrong side of the tracks. Same here. But look at the bright side. If we were born on the right side of the tracks, we wouldn't have the skill set to survive the apocalypse, Chase replied. Yeah, we'd just have the money to have our helicopter fly us to our private island, Williams joked. Chase thought for a moment, and both of them burst into laughter before refocusing on their plan. Okay, so we need to get into the gym for the rope. Do you know how to hotwire a bus? Williams asked. I'm hoping the keys are in the storage area for the buses, Chase replied. And if they're not, Williams questioned. Then we get an answer to your question, Chase said confidently. Williams raised an eyebrow before Chase motioned for him to follow. Come on, let's get to the school. I want to be out of town by sundown, Chase said. Do you have a destination in mind? Williams inquired. One of the nature preserves to the south or east of here, hoping that there aren't a lot of people or those things. We can figure out our next move from there, Chase explained. Good enough for me, Williams agreed. The two men headed back to the garage, with Williams taking the wheel while Chase went to the garage door opener. Once Chase gave the signal, he pressed the button and rushed to the passenger side, hopping in and slamming the door shut. As the garage door opened, a few zombies outside noticed and rushed in as soon as they could. They thudded against the windows as Williams put the truck into reverse running over a couple of creatures and causing the vehicle to bounce violently. He managed to get them onto the road, shifted into drive, and sped out of the neighborhood. The noise drew the attention of nearby creatures, who sprinted after them. But Williams wasn't worried. The truck had more than enough speed to leave them in the dust. They reached the main road, only to find it swarming with creatures. How do you feel about driving through yards? Williams asked. This thing is four-wheel drive. Seems a shame not to use it, Chase replied. Williams smirked as he activated the four-wheel drive mode, steering the truck off the road and through the neighborhood. They sped through several yards, getting a few blocks away before returning to the road. Most of the zombies that had been in pursuit were now far behind them, and they had reached a relatively quiet area. So, where am I going? Williams inquired. It's about four miles to the east of here. Might as well stay off the main road as much as possible, Chase suggested. Williams nodded and maneuvered through the neighborhoods, doing his best to maintain a quick pace so that even if a creature noticed them, it couldn't catch up. It took several minutes to get to the other side of town, avoiding zombies and maneuvering around car wrecks. The apocalypse had taken a toll on the infrastructure, even in its early days. Finally, they were a block away from the high school. They stopped at the edge of the road, attracting a single zombie that ran over from a nearby house. It thudded against the passenger side glass, leaving a smear of blood. Chase remained unfazed. The school before them was massive, still looking brand new with its glass exterior and a giant gym to the right. The duo surveyed the area spotting numerous zombies coming in and out of the building. To the right side of the parking lot, they saw the bus lot. So, what do you want to hit first? Williams asked. Chase studied the area and nodded, confident in his decision. We get the rope first. Those things are going to follow us inside, so if we're able to sneak out, it'll make it easier to find a working bus. Okay, are you ready to do this? Williams inquired. Like you said earlier, as ready as we'll ever be, Chase replied with a smirk. Chase pointed straight ahead toward the school. Hit it. Chapter 3. 
Williams hit the gas pedal hard and the truck roared to life, rapidly picking up speed. With a skilled hand, he steered the vehicle towards the right, aiming for the entrance to the driveway. The truck weaved deftly around several packs of zombies, their lifeless eyes following the speeding vehicle. The moans of the undead filled the air as they gave chase. As they entered the parking lot, the combined noise of the engine and the zombie moans drew more of them towards the truck. Chase's eyes darted around frantically, taking in the nightmarish scene unfolding around them. Creatures were converging on them from all directions. Private Chase, panic in his voice, finally spoke up. I just realized we overlooked one key part of the plan. Corporal Williams glanced over at Chase, a wry smile forming on his face as he gripped the wheel tightly. Oh, yeah, what's that? How the hell are we getting into the school? Chase asked. Williams chuckled, his eyes locked on their perilous path. You may want to fasten that seatbelt, Chase. Chase's heart raced as he understood what Williams was about to do and began frantically trying to fasten his seatbelt. You're out of your mind, Williams. Williams hit the gas again, pushing the truck to its limits as they approached the school building. He aimed the vehicle towards a giant pane of glass that stretched from floor to ceiling. Both men braced themselves as the truck collided with the glass, shattering it into a thousand pieces. The impact jolted them forward, but the truck quickly regained its momentum. They found themselves in a common area, filled with seats, with the gym to their right and a long hallway straight ahead. Looking into their side mirrors, they saw a horde of zombies following closely behind. We aren't going to make those doors, Chase shouted. Williams gritted his teeth. We'll find different ones then. Williams floored the gas pedal, causing the truck's tires to burn out, leaving behind a thick black mark on the floor before gaining traction again. They sped down the narrow hallway of the school with Williams struggling to keep the truck in the middle. Despite his best efforts, the truck scraped against lockers, sending sparks flying as metal grated against metal. They reached the next hallway that ran alongside the gym, but the turn was too tight for Williams to make. He slammed on the brakes and the truck came to a stop, pressed up against the wall, its front end protruding partially into the hallway. Everybody out of the pool, Williams shouted. Chase and Williams quickly exited the truck through the same door, slamming it shut behind them. As they sprinted down the hallway, they could hear the thunderous footsteps and moans of the pursuing zombies. Fortunately, most of the creatures slammed into the truck, unable to navigate their way around to the opening. This bought the two soldiers enough time to reach the other gym doors. Williams tugged on the doors, but they only opened a few inches. He tried again, realizing they were chained from the inside. Chase, hold the door open as far as you can, Williams instructed. Chase nodded and followed the order, keeping his hand on his rifle and aiming it towards the zombies at the far end of the hall. Williams took aim, firing a few rounds through the small opening, hitting the chain and breaking it apart. He moved Chase aside and pulled the doors open forcefully. As the doors creaked open, a couple of zombies found their way between the truck and the wall, sprinting down the hall towards the duo. Incoming, Chase shouted. Chase took aim, firing with precision towards the sprinting creatures. His first shot cracked the skull of the lead zombie, dropping it to the ground. He shot again, barely missing a headshot. The bullet ripped through the jaw, ripping bone from skull, but allowing the zombie to continue its pursuit. Chase stepped up to protect Williams, using his momentum to strike the lead zombie just before it reached them. The ghoul tumbled past them to the ground, scrambling to get back on its feet. As it rose, Chase aimed his weapon and fired several rounds towards its head. One shot hit true, ending the creature's unlife. We're in. Williams declared. The two soldiers rushed inside the gym, which was fully lit. They secured the door, ensuring that the zombies outside couldn't get in. Their weapons remained at the ready as they scanned the gym for any immediate threats. Guess we're alone, Chase remarked. 
Williams gestured towards the ground in front of the bleachers, where a large pool of blood and bloody handprints on the seating area told a gruesome tale. They followed the trail of blood as it led toward the far end of the gym. Chains obstructed the doors ahead, suggesting that whatever left the trail was likely still inside. The duo cautiously approached the end of the bleachers, their weapons ready for any surprises. They turned to the corner, and what they saw made them lower their weapons. That is a terrible way to go out, Chase commented. There was a zombie on the ground, writhing and struggling to get up. Chains were tightly wrapped around its feet and wrists, preventing it from moving freely. The young man, not more than 20, bore several bite wounds on his body. His blood-soaked shirt bore the school's logo. He probably saw what those bites do to people and didn't want to hurt anybody when he turned, Williams mused. Chase hesitated for a moment. Should we leave him be? You want to leave him like this? Williams asked. For all we know, he's in there dreaming. You don't honestly believe that, do you? Williams asked. 48 hours ago, if you told me I'd be fighting against an army of zombies, I wouldn't have believed it either. So, you know, anything's possible at this point, Chase responded. Yeah, fair enough, Williams said. He then raised his weapon and fired putting an end to the poor man's tormented existence. But chains are not. I don't want one of those things near where I am, Williams declared. Chase nodded, and the two men quickly set out to find the equipment room within the gym. It didn't take them long before their eyes fell upon it, situated at the far end. As they made their way towards the equipment room, they decided to take the long way around, inspecting the exterior doors that led to a vast field alongside the parking lot. Private Chase glanced outside. Doesn't look too bad out there. Corporal Williams raised an eyebrow. What's your definition of not too bad? Maybe a dozen of those things spread out, Chase responded. That's still some stiff resistance. Those things are fast as hell. Chase tried to be optimistic. We'll just have to be faster. Plus, the buses are inside a gate. We just have to beat them to it and hop over. Williams couldn't help but smile. You make it sound like we're running the obstacle course back in basic and not running for our lives. Chase chuckled in response. Not sure who your drill sergeant was, but to me, they're one and the same. The two soldiers arrived at the equipment room and knocked on the door as a precaution. Receiving no response, they cautiously entered and switched on the light. Inside, they found an abundance of supplies, including sports equipment of all kinds. Weights and tucked away in a corner, a climbing rope. They gathered the rope and stashed it into a canvas bag. Okay, that's one problem down, Williams remarked. Before leaving the equipment room, Chase grabbed a metal baseball bat from a shelf giving it a few practice swings before deciding to bring it along. You have two guns and you're opting for a baseball bat, Williams asked. Chase grinned, a mischievous glint in his eye. Never know when we're going to need a stealth kill. Williams shook his head in amusement as they made their way across the basketball court towards the exterior doors. They examined the chains wrapped around the doors, trying to find the weakest link to attack. Chase spotted a door with an unlocked padlock. Whoever put these up wanted an escape plan. Williams nodded in agreement. That's good, because I really didn't want to have to shoot the lock off again. We're going to have enough attention on us as soon as we're out in the open. Williams gazed at the eight-foot-high fence surrounding the bus lot. Doesn't look like there's barbed wire at the top, so that's a plus. But man, that's quite a climb. It's going to take some effort to get up and over. Chase tried to reassure Williams. We just need five steps on the nearest creature, and we'll be good. Williams chuckled. I think you're overestimating my climbing ability. Chase playfully smacked Williams on the arm. You'll be all right, Williams. Come on, we're burning daylight. Williams nodded and proceeded to remove the chain from the doors. The two of them slipped outside as quietly as possible, gently shutting the door behind them. Despite their efforts, the door snapped shut.
but fortunately no nearby zombies seemed to have heard it. The duo moved along the side of the gym, with Chase in the lead. They moved swiftly, trying to minimize noise. However, their attempt at stealth was short-lived as they reached the corner of the building. A zombie appeared from around the corner, catching them by surprise. Acting on instinct, Chase swung the bat with all his might. It connected with the zombie's skull, but the force of the blow caused the bat to hit the brick wall, producing a metallic ping. Without wasting a moment, both soldiers sprinted towards the fence, the sound of the metal bat echoing in the air behind them. They looked around as they ran, watching as zombies closed in from all sides. Most of the creatures were far enough away that they would reach the fence before them. However, one fast-moving zombie from the right posed a threat to Williams. In a risky move, Chase hurled the bat towards the running creature's legs. The metal bludgeon sailed through the air and tripped up the zombie, sending it crashing to the ground just before reaching them. This brief delay bought them the precious seconds they needed to reach the fence. As they climbed the fence, they could feel the impact of the zombies crashing against it, reaching up and clawing at the bottom of their boots as they got over to the other side. They hit the ground hard, immediately drawing their rifles and scanning the area around the buses for any potential threats. Thankfully, there were no immediate dangers. And you didn't want me to bring the bat, Chase teased. Williams chuckled and nodded. Come on, let's find those keys. The two of them headed towards a small outbuilding, opening it up to reveal a lockbox filled with keys. They located the one for bus number 13, which happened to be right in front of the gate opening. They got into the bus, and Chase took the driver's seat. Williams raised an eyebrow. Do you know how to drive one of these things? Chase grinned mischievously. Nope. Williams just gave him a curious look. Well, do you? Chase asked. Nope. Well, do you want to rock, paper, scissors for it then? Chase asked. I'm good, Chase. You have at it. Just try not to wreck us. Chase's response was lighthearted. No promises. Williams took a seat, and Chase started up the massive bus, playfully honking the horn a couple of times before slamming on the gas. The bus roared to life, crashing through the front gate and rolling over a few zombies in the process. Chase made the turn towards the road. I'm on the way, baby. I'm on the way, Chase declared with determination as they raced to their next destination. Chapter 4 The duo drove the school bus through a residential area, their vehicle effortlessly plowing through zombies that helplessly bounced off the front bumper. Chase, the driver, was cautious not to strike the undead on the edges, preventing them from getting caught in the wheel well. After covering several miles, they finally reached their destination an apartment building that appeared to be in shambles. The grounds surrounding it were infested with a couple hundred zombies, aimlessly wandering, hungry for a victim. Which apartment is hers? asked Corporal Williams. One of them on the fourth floor, replied Private Chase. Chase reached for his phone and dialed her number. After a few rings, Wendy answered. Babe, are you okay? Wendy asked. I'm fine, baby. I need you to go out to your balcony with a towel or something, Chase replied. Okay, give me a minute, Wendy said as she hurried through the apartment. Moments later, they saw a door opening onto a patio, and she waved a towel back and forth. Do you see me? she asked. We do. I need you to stay like that while we pull up, Chase instructed. How are you getting up to us? Wendy inquired. We're going to have to fight our way up to you. But we have a rope so that we can get everybody down to the bus, Chase explained. Okay, baby. You just let me know what you need me to do, Wendy agreed. Just stand there and look beautiful. I'm on the way, Chase said, ending the call. Chase pocketed his phone and glanced over at Williams, who was smirking and shaking his head. Just stand there and look beautiful. If that line was any cheesier, I'd swear it came from Wisconsin, Williams teased. Normally, I'd have a witty comeback, 
but we need to focus. Chase responded. Or maybe you're just too smitten to form coherent sentences, Williams continued to jest. Chase playfully flipped Williams off, causing him to burst into laughter. Are you ready for this? Chase asked, trying to regain their focus. Let's go save your girl. I know you're just dying for a kiss, Williams teased again. I hate you so much right now, Chase retorted. Williams continued laughing to himself as Chase hit the gas, but he didn't go too fast. Mindful of the bus's vulnerability, the zombies outside converged on them, their bloody hands smacking against the bus, causing it to sway slightly from side to side. However, it wasn't enough to stop their progress. Chase maneuvered the bus to the parking lot, stopping just beneath the second floor patio and directly under Wendy's patio above. He turned off the bus, and the two men made their way to the middle of the aisle. They popped out the emergency exit hatch and used the seats to climb onto the roof. Once they were both up there, they looked up at Wendy, who was peering over the side. Stay by the door. We're going to be up there in a few minutes. You're going to hear gunshots. Just don't panic. Be ready to let us in when I knock, Chase instructed. I'll be ready, baby, Wendy replied. The two men secured their gear and the rope before looking up at the first patio area, which was about six feet above them. Give me a boost, Chase asked Williams. Williams nodded and boosted Chase high enough that he could get a handhold on the patio wall. He struggled for a moment but managed to pull himself up high enough to look over. Chase spotted a zombie inside, causing him to drop back down quickly. However, the zombie didn't come over to the edge of the patio wall, and Chase realized he was safe. Chase pulled himself up again, noticing that the zombie was inside the apartment behind a closed door. Are you good, Chase? Williams asked. Yeah, I'm just a dumbass, Chase admitted. Not the first time today. Doubt it will be the last, Williams quipped. Chase braced himself enough to let go with one hand playfully flipping off Williams. Then he pulled himself over, drawing his handgun. He tapped on the glass, getting the zombie's attention, which charged straight for him. The creature smacked hard into the glass, smearing blood as it tried to bite through the door. Chase carefully aimed his handgun, placing it just inches away from the glass before pulling the trigger. The zombie's head jerked backward and it fell to the ground. Chase waited for a moment before determining that the apartment was empty. He turned and leaned over the edge of the patio, reaching down so that Williams could jump up and grab his arm. It was a bit of a struggle, but he managed to pull the corporal up high enough to get a handhold. A moment later, they were on the patio, guns drawn as they entered the apartment. They moved quickly through it, stopping at the door and looking through the peephole, seeing nothing outside. Okay, when we get out this door, we're hanging a left. There's a stairwell at the end of the hallway that will take us up to the fourth floor, Chase whispered. What's the apartment number? Williams asked. 413, Chase replied. You're on point. I'll cover the rear. And remember, this is a one-way trip. So if you need to unload, do it. We just need to get there in one piece. Not worry about coming back. Williams reminded him. Chase and Williams exchanged a fist bump, a silent gesture of solidarity, before getting ready for their daring mission. Williams opened the door and Chase quickly darted into the hallway, his rifle at the ready, making way for Williams to follow suit. Both men were nearly frozen with fear as they saw half a dozen zombies in each direction down the dimly lit hallway. Miraculously, none of the zombies had noticed their presence. They exchanged a tense side glance, their backs almost touching. Chase subtly nodded to Williams before selecting his target, a large zombie about 10 yards away down the corridor. Chase squeezed the trigger, a single shot hitting the zombie in the side of the head. As the ghoul fell, another one emerged right behind it. Without hesitation, Chase fired again, putting a round into its head. The two men moved swiftly down the hallway, continuously firing towards the approaching zombies. 
It turned into a full-on firefight as they struggled to hold back the advancing undead. Several more creatures emerged from a side hallway, adding to the menacing horde. As they approached the stairwell, a small mob of zombies blocked their path to the door. Chase opened fire rapidly, dropping all but one of the zombies in his way. He dashed forward, shoving the last zombie out the door and into the stairwell. The force was enough to send the ghoul tumbling down the stairs, its bones audibly cracking as it descended, rendering it immobile. While this was happening, Williams rushed through the door, firing his weapon and slamming it shut using his body weight to keep it closed. Now what do we do? Williams asked. Stay there, Chase replied. Williams quipped sarcastically. Yeah, great plan. Chase ran up to the next landing, aiming his gun upward and listening carefully. He breathed a sigh of relief when there was no sound from above. When I give the signal, you break away from the door and I'll cover you, Chase instructed. Chase quickly swapped magazines in his rifle, getting it ready for action. I'm going to head straight up to the fourth floor, so don't you be too long, Williams said. As soon as you get past me, I'm on your ass, Chase assured him. The two men prepared for their daring maneuver. Go, Chase commanded. Williams broke away from the door, hugging the outer wall to avoid the firing line. He had barely taken two steps when the door flew open under the weight of the zombies. Chase fired as fast as he could towards the approaching undead. He managed to hit a few in the head, dropping them and momentarily blocking the path of the others, allowing the two soldiers to sprint up the stairs. They could hear the mob closing in behind them, urging them to move even faster. Reaching the fourth floor door, Williams threw it open, only to be met by a couple of zombies right in front of it. Chase ducked underneath William's arms, barreling into the hallway with his shoulder, knocking the two creatures to the ground. With too much momentum, he had to leap over them and landed hard on the floor. As he scrambled to his feet, William slammed the door shut, sealing the zombies inside the stairwell. He raised his weapon and fired, dispatching the ghouls on the ground that were crawling towards Chase. Williams rushed over to Chase, grabbing his arm and helping him up. Are you good? Williams asked. Chase nodded, and the two of them ran down the hallway, guns at the ready, shooting at any moving figures. There were several zombies in the hallway heading toward them, but their firepower was sufficient to eliminate the immediate threat. They reached Wendy's apartment, and Chase started knocking urgently. Open up. Open up. The door unlocked, and the two men began firing in both directions to keep the zombie threat at bay. Finally, the door swung open, and they darted inside, slamming it shut behind them. Both of them remained focused on the door as several hands fumbled for the various locks. When the door was secure, Chase turned and saw his girlfriend, Wendy, smiling widely. Wendy ran up to Chase, giving him a tight hug and a kiss. They remained embraced for several moments before Chase gently backed away. Sorry, baby. I'm covered in blood. I mean, it's not mine. So don't worry. I just didn't want to stain your clothes. Chase apologized. I can deal with a little blood, Wendy replied. Going back to embrace him tightly, after a few more moments, she broke away. Okay, I did as you asked. I got all of our food and water packed up. It's not much, but it should get us all through a week, Wendy informed him. That's a start, Chase acknowledged. Chase glanced over and noticed another couple, in their thirties, sitting on the couch. They both appeared exhausted, as if they hadn't slept since the crisis began. He nodded at them. Don't worry, we're going to get you out of here and to someplace safe, Chase assured them. They nodded in response as Chase and Williams retrieved the climbing rope. I'll start getting this secure to the balcony. Can you start getting prepped to move? Williams asked. Chase nodded, and the two men began their preparations. Over the next hour, they carefully helped everyone down to the roof of the bus below, a time-consuming but thankfully uneventful process. Once everyone was safely inside the bus, the civilians appeared anxious, 
due to the zombies surrounding them. Don't worry, they can't get in here, Williams reassured them. Chase took his place at the wheel, starting up the bus and letting it idle for a few moments. Wendy sat in the driver's seat with him, resting her head on his shoulder. Is everybody ready to roll? Chase asked. The group nodded in agreement. Take us to the promised land, my man, Williams encouraged. And where is that exactly? Wendy inquired. Some swamp land outside of town, Chase answered. Wendy gave them both a curious look. With any luck, there won't be any people out there, Williams added. Sounds like the promised land to me, Wendy said with a smile. Everyone shared a light chuckle as the bus began to pick up speed, gently pushing the zombie mob out of the way as they drove out of the parking lot, heading towards a place they hoped would be safe. The End